they're going to have the same faith that common people suffer. So we have to make justice available to, to common people. We have to remove corruption so that it, we, our children will not be victims of corruption. We have to decide on it. Mayroon pang tanong dito, ano ha? Babasahin ko ito. It's a question. Baka sabi nila, ay hindi ko tatanungin kasi baka hindi maganda yung tanong. Di ba, Leigh? Hindi ko sasagutin. There is a question here. <laughs> I cannot actually understand the question, but uh, it's something your relationship with ex Solicitor uh, General uh, Mendoza. Probably the second question and the third question uh, should be asked together. Ano, Ang sinasabi kasi sa, in, the, in the question, your relationship to uh, Solgen uh, Mendoza and that uh, how come that uh, a letter from him could reach uh, the en banc and consider this as a pleading, something like that. Like in the case of probably she's is referring to uh, the questionnaires. I mean, the one who posed the question is, you might be referring to the PASAP and the League of Cities, mm -hmm. and then your relationship. Well, I was not, well, I was not involved in the PASAP case, you know, yeah. so it's, I think it belong to Justice another division. Yeah, I think. Okay. Now, well, just anyway. my relation to him is that I worked for the Solicitor General's office 11 years, and actually, I was solicitor. I was not reporting to him directly for 10 years. I was only reporting to Justice Vicente Mendoza, who was my head, and then later on some other, some other uh, assistant solicitor general. And on the last year that I was assistant solicitor general, I reported to him directly. But we, were, we, we have become friends because that's how we, that's what we have. And the people we work with, they become our friends. But I never worked for him. I can confirm that in one case where I was the ponente, the uh, decision was adverse to the client of Justice, uh, I mean, of, sec of, uh, of Soljen Mendoza, and you joined me. You remember that case about an arbitration? I don't remember. Uh, exactly. Well, anyway, anyway. I don't remember because I don't look at the names of the lawyers, actually, yeah. in the cases. That's something I... so for your information, you joined me. It was a decision, <laughs> it was a decision adverse to uh, Solicitor so, uh, General well, Mendoza. I practiced for 22 years. I never practiced with him. I have my own practice, and I think I can be proud that I have a prosperous practice when I practice. I did not need cases from him. The only time I appeared with him was in that uh, tax case where he was the lawyer for uh, uh, Fortune Tobacco and Lusitan, and they needed a lawyer for uh, the distributors. They were looking for a lawyer. They, he recommended me, so I accepted. I accepted that, and that's where... Uh, and the, the, the test of whether I did anything wrong is to look at the evidence in that case. You know? Whether I, I introduced evidence that is false or made any misrepresentation or things like that. No, I did my best as a trial lawyer. And I was paid for it. And you won the case. Uh, <laughs> I think your clients were acquitted. I was, yes, I won the case. Okay. Now... Uh, Oh, this is also a question. How will you bring back, I think you answered this already, how will you bring back the public trust to the Supreme Court? I think you already answered. Oh, you, there was a question asked from a member of the panel. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, that's all, Justice uh, Robert. Uh, may I? May I thank ask, you. Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Oh, oh another, there's an, oh, another okay. round or yeah, uh, just uh, one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Justice. Uh, you say you are the chairman of the uh, jail congestion committee? Jail decongestion, yes. Well, what is the truth of the report? That the, the jail in Camp Carinal, Carinal is so congested that uh, prisoners do not sleep lying down. They sleep standing up. <laughs> Well, you cannot sleep standing up, but it's really congested. In Manila, the capacity is 1,000. They have 4,000. I think Venezuela and some other places, it's really even worse, you know. Uh, I've not seen the other places yet, but I've been to Pasay. I've been to jail, spoke to the prisoners, and your heart will go out for them. What has been, what has been done about it? Well... Uh, what we are doing is we plan to have the 
population of the jails to reduce it to one half in two years' time. Because, you know, there are a lot of them there who are there because they cannot post bond. As I said, our bail system is anti-poor. They could not post bond, but they are held only for personal, for property crimes. So, so, well, we should keep that there, allow them recognitions, and then keep only in jail those who are in the violent offenses or recidivists or things like that. But the others one, the first offenders that you take from their families, it's really a pity. The children, uh, we make criminals of the children when you deprive them of their parents because they have no way of uh, making money. You worsen the problem. Thank you. Okay. Lana. O tama na, Justice Robert. Baka may pagtanong ba? Salamat sa inyo lahat. Okay. Thank you, Justice. Your Honors, the next to be interviewed is Attorney Rafael A. Morales, partner Sisip Salazar Hernandez and Gatmaitan. Oh, kaya pala. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Biglang nawala. Ha? Huh? Tao. <laughs> okay, uh, Attorney Cayosa, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Attorney Morales. 